Okay, so we look at the topic of regression today, and what regression really means is using the existing data that we have to somehow create a mathematical model, and then using that mathematical model to make predictions about the future. Okay? And so it's actually the calculator that's going to do most of the work for us. We just have to make sure we understand what the calculator is doing and how that applies to our particular problem. So I have a problem here, a list of data, years from 1950 to 2010, and then gas prices uh, from 1950 through 2010. And my first question here is, says, is saying, draw a scatter plot of the cost of gas, y, as a function of years since 1950. So I'm actually going to use my uh, graphing calculator to do this work for me. Make sure we have uh, everything in here. Okay. And so what you're going to do is get on your calculator and hit the stat button. That's right here. It's be between delete and program. Go into edit. It's already there. And you have a bunch of lists here, L1, L2, L3. That's list 1, list 2, list 3. So I'm going to clear out list 1. So I'm going to move that cursor all the way to the top and hit clear, enter. Move the cursor to the top here where it's highlighting list 2. Clear, enter, and that wipes everything out. And then what I'm going to do is type in all of the years, 1950, 1960. And uh, I'm going to pause it while I type in all, all of this in. Okay, so you can see now that I've got all of the years typed in. And the thing with this problem is that it's telling us uh, to draw the graph as a function of years since 1950. So I don't actually want the absolute years. I want the years since 1950. And your calculator has a very nice function here called list arithmetic where it can subtract a number from every single one of these items in the list. So you move the, the cursor or the highlight up to the very top and then I'm actually gonna type in list one so I'm gonna hit the second button and find list one in yellow down here and that's actually the, the number one key okay so you see L1 in here in my little window minus 1950 so it's gonna subtract 1950 from every single item in list one and that gives me this list from 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 and so on okay I'm gonna, and now in list two, I'm actually gonna type in all of the cost uh, for a gallon of gas. So I'm gonna type all these numbers in 0 0.2, 0 0.64, and I'm gonna go all the way down the list. Okay. So I've got all of that typed in. I've got two lists. The first list is year since 1950. That's L1. L2 is all of the cost for a gallon of gas in US dollars. And then now I'm ready to actually graph. So what I'm going to do is go into stat plot, and that's the second key, and then y equals. Second, stat plot. I'm going to go to the plot 1, turn this on, and make sure that the x list says L1, so it already says that. Make sure that the y list says L2, it already says that. So L1 is all of the numbers that are going to go on the x-axis, L2 over the y list here are all the numbers that are going to go on the y-axis, that's very good. Then I'm going to go into my window and make sure that it's set up correctly. Now, here it's going to go from 0 to 60 because that's how many years it's been since 1950 for the x values. And I'm going to go by 10. That's pretty good uh, increments. For the y, it's going from 0.2. So I'll go from 0. And I'm going to go up to maybe, well, I don't know, uh, $3.50. And I'll increase it by half at a time because these look at these gas prices. They come from less than one all the way to um, to 2.65. Okay, and then hit graph. Now the the thing is, you you see that extra line that's drawn that's being drawn in there. That's my graph in y equals. You can see that I have this equation here. That's from some other problem. So I'm I'm gonna unselect it. So just I get a pure clean graph. Okay, and there you can see it. It's a, it's a pretty nice looking graph. And I'm actually just going to zoom out just a little bit more, just so we get a better uh, sense of everything. So I'm going to go to 100, and then I'm going to go up to $4. Okay, and so you get a kind of a better view. And now I'm going to transfer this uh, onto my paper. Okay, and so this is what it should look like once you transfer onto your paper. It's going to look like, uh, make sure you label the axes. The X and the Y, 
and it looks pretty much like a line. Okay. Now for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to my calculator just so I have a, a little more space to work with on my paper. Okay. So we put this aside. We'll go back to our calculator, and we'll look at the other parts of the problem. Now it's saying here, uh, part B. Find the regression equation and round e coefficients to the nearest thousandth. Okay, and this is where regression really comes in. And we'll, let's walk through these steps uh, slowly. Okay, and so again, regression is we have this data here that has this nice graph, and the question is, can we draw a mathematical model, a mathematical equation that goes through most of those points that? that matches up with the existing data. And if we can get a good model, then we can use that model to make predictions about other data points that we don't know yet, okay? So you can see here that it's, it kind of looks pretty much like, like a line. Okay? So it's probably gonna be a linear equation. And um, there's lots of other equations that it could be, but it looks most closely to a line. So I hit second, quit, that exits out. And I'm gonna go into stat, calc, and I'm gonna, and you can see here, there's all these different regressions on here. Uh, there's linear regression, quadratic, cubic, quartic, all these different types of regression. And it looks like it's going to be a linear, a line. So I'm gonna use linear regression. And it wants to, the, you, what you need to type in after that is you need to do two lists. So list one, that's the, all the X values, put a comma in there, and then type list two. That's all the Y values and I'm gonna hit enter, and that's what it gives me, okay? So I get that for part B, it's Y equals AX plus B, or MX plus B, if that's uh, the variable that you're more used to, okay? And it's, on this calculator it tells me that A is approximately 0 0.040, and B is approximately 0 0.235, okay? So that means for my equation, Y equals 0.04x plus 0.235, okay? And I'm gonna show you another feature that's pretty cool with this calculator, and that's called the, the diagnostic. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. And we're gonna go into uh, second and the catalog, or the zero key here. Okay. And I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna do kind of a fast scrolling so if you hit the the X, uh, the, the green D here, or the X to the negative first power, it's gonna jump down to all the Ds, and I'm gonna find diagnostic, and make sure I turn it on. Okay, and I'll show you why this is, this is helpful in just a minute, okay? So I'm gonna, and then after diagnostic is on, I'm gonna type in just the exact same thing that I typed in before. Let me actually clear this out. Okay. Oops, there it is. Linear regression, and hit enter. And now you see it, it's, it's showing me a little bit more than I, what I saw before. It shows me the same thing, the A values, the B values, and then it also shows me R squared and R. And what R means, it's the uh, correlation coefficient. And that tells us how closely does this equation match up to the data. And so an R value of one would be perfect. Okay, and our value of negative one would be also perfect, but that just means it goes in as a negative slope. And you can see here, this R value is very, very good. It's almost one, it's almost perfect. So that means our line is gonna be very, very good compared to our data. And if you just, you're just curious, and you, maybe you're thinking, well, why not something else? Why couldn't this be a very zoomed in version of a quadratic um, graph? So let's try that. Just, just to prove a point, we'll go to calc, we'll go down to quad reg, L1 comma L2 and hit enter. Okay. And here you can see that it's, it's giving you uh, variables for a quadratic equation and the R value is still pretty good. This is actually R squared, not R, but it's still pretty good, but not quite as good as what we had before with linear regression, okay? So the, the point here is that the the R value is a really great indicator of how closely the data matches with the function. And just to prove that point, let's actually go into our Y equals. Let me clear out all this other stuff. And I'm actually gonna graph this equation right here. Okay. 0 0.04X plus 0 0.235 graph. 
and you can see that the line passes through almost every single one of those data points. That's, that means it's a very good uh, model for the current data that we have. Okay? And the nice thing about this model is once we have it, we can actually use it to make some other um, calculations for us. So part C here says compare the price of gas in 2000 from your equation versus the, the actual price. So here, the actual price is 2.2. Let's see what our model tells us. So we'll say the actual was 2.2. And our model, and I'm going to substitute in a 50, because 2000 is 50 years since 1950. So y equals 0 0.04 times 50 plus 0.235. And that's going to give me 2.235, or about $2.23. So the actual data says $2.20. Our, our model says about $2.23, so it's pretty darn close. So you can see that this is a very, very good model based on the equations that we have. Now the last thing it's asking me to do is use your equation to predict the price of gas in 2015. So 2015 is 65 years okay, since 1950. So I'm using my model here, y equals 0 0.04, substitute in 65, because that's how many years it's been since 1950, plus 0 0.235. And once I do that, that's going to give me two dollars and eighty-three and a half cents. So about two dollars and eighty-four. Now, at the rate, I mean, gas prices have already exceeded this because of you know other factors in the economy and whatnot. But it just goes to show that the model that we have here isn't a perfect model. It doesn't predict the future perfectly, but it is pretty good based on the existing data that we have. Okay, and so there you have it. We're using uh, function regression, which is a way to take existing data, make an equation out of it, and then use that equation to predict future uh, data points.